then uh, Genesis 21, chapter, uh, chapter 21, verse 6 says, And Abram was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. So it's clear from the uh, Bible that uh, Ishmael was the firstborn, and he was the only son for 14 years, and that Isaac was never the only son of Abraham. And we come to uh, Genesis chapter 22, and it says about the sacrifice uh, that your only child, Isaac. Uh, uh, so this is uh, uh, the, the son that the Bible says was called to sacrifice, Isaac, your only child. So then my question is, uh, how did he become only child when Bible itself uh, says that Isaac was never the only child? Do you, do you want to comment on that, or should I? Do, do you? Well, I, I forget. I just was reading a, a book on the children of Abraham, and um, I forget who wrote it even, but uh, he was, from his research, saying that even in Muslim sources, nearly 50% of the Muslim sources suggest it was Isaac, and some, and 50% Ishmael. What is the reference? Yeah, I, I, I have it at home. I, I was, I was very. Is it, is it fifty probably, or probably is, it, is it fifty or forty-nine? <laughs> okay. Anyway, it, it I was, think there was a controversy. It, it, was, yeah, it was quite, it was quite a large yeah. percentage. Can I give you a reference from the Quran? Check Surah Al-Safat, which speaks about the story of sacrifice. And after the story is finished, and as a reward to Abraham, it says, وَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِإِسْحَاقَ نَبِيًّا مِّنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And we gave him the glad tidings of a birth of, means another child, Ishaq, Isaac. Isaac. But anyway, I, I'd be happy to, uh, there to no give you the... There is no single reference, I can tell you. There is no single it's reference it. in the Quran, directly or indirectly implying that the sacrificial son was Isaac. See, unlike, you talk about uh, interpretation of some uh, scholar, mistaken interpretation, that is found. That's no problem. But no, the, text, but you, you, no, the no. text of the Quran, I'm talking about Come the text on, of the Quran, and when the Quran speaks clearly, that is the authority that's to be taken, whether by you or us. You, you can't just accept uh, authorities when they sort of serve your purposes and then dismiss them when they no, don't serve no, your purposes. No, that's not the point. That's not I the mean, point. Uh, come the on, Quran, we have to be see, fair here as well. No scholar, no scholar <laughs> even would deny that the Quran is number one source. When the Quran is definitive on the issue, and it's very clear, cut, that this story of sacrifice happened. After the story is finished and say, we get the glad tidings later of a birth at a later time, of Isaac, there is absolutely no ground whatsoever to base this argument on an Islamic source. Not only that, but if I may add one thing, if I may add, if I may add one thing, it, it is a difference of how to look, uh, how do you look at the scriptures. In, in, from what I have seen since, you know, yesterday and today, in Christianity, you can read something in the Bible and come up with a contradictory conclusion. In Islam, whatever the Quran says, that's it. There is no someone to make up his mind after the statement of the Quran. So I, I would really seriously doubt if any so-called Muslim scholar would come up to make up any opinion or conclusion <coughs> against the clear statement of the Quran. I really doubt. No, but even then, that may only reflect the tafsir anyway. Quran that there are so-called Israelites and some converts to Islam who came with the uh, biblical background might have made a mistake or erred in that interpretation. That even if you prove, if you give these names, it doesn't matter because the text of the Quran is there. Yeah. It's so clear on it. But don't uh, get so... In all, could I say something? Because this is just in fairness to the no. fellow who brought up the point. I, I read the same study and, and the, uh, I forget who the author is also. Yeah. I forget what, I think it's called Journeys in the Holy Land. Yeah, that's yes. it, right, exactly. And he quotes uh, every uh, uh, ancient authority that he could possibly find on this, and he, he lists them all, and it comes out a slight advantage in favor of Ishaq and uh, Ishmael. And, uh, and he, ad he admits that, from his opinion, he feels this is the, as Dr. Bedoui said, this it reflects the Israeli out influence and etc. But, you know, in all fairness to the fellow who brought up, to the doctor who brought up the point, it, it is true, there was a debate, and at one point the majority did, uh, were inclined to believe it was Isaac. But the research never uh, referred to the uh, primary it, it does source. Seem to go this is the point. The research, no matter who did it, no matter who put the conclusion in it, never should have referred uh, to people before the primary source, which is the Quran itself. Yeah.
Thank you. And here, can I just say something on this? Uh, sure. We're talking about Genesis uh, 22 in the Bible, and this is just what the Bible says. And of course, you you just told us about what the uh, Quran said, and it said, and Abraham stretched out his hand and took to ni the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And he said, do not stretch out your hand against the lad and do nothing to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham raised his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the place of his son. Now, what, what I think here is a point that we should focus in on, apart from which son it is, is the point that God is providing a sacrifice. Whichever son it was, God offers a ram, provides a ram. And so we have the teaching there's a ram provided who is a substitute for the son of Abraham. And you have here a teaching about a substitution which is uh, redemptive, which is uh, salvific. And so I would say, in a sense, it's irrelevant. And if it is uh, Ishmael, well, then God is teaching to the Muslim that the way the Muslim and the children of uh, 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 Ishmael will be saved is by God providing a substitute for them. And then this fits in with a verse in Hebrews which says, for if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sp sprinkling those who have been defiled sanctify for the cleansing of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Muslims want to serve the living God. Here is the way to have your conscience cleansed from dead works by the power of this substitute who's given for the sons of Ishmael as well as the sons With of Isaac. With all due respect, your answer evades the main issue which relates to the topic today is the Bible, the word of God. Now, there is a clear contradiction here. How could Isaac have been the only son? So there is a clear contradiction, and we're still claiming the Bible is revelation. Secondly, even when you speak about the issue of sacrifice, on the contrary, it doesn't mean that at all. It, it's not interpreted this way. If it means anything, it means that God is not interested in the blood, and that's why the ram was sent there in, in sacrifice. It has absolutely nothing to do with the vicarious sacrifice. It is simply an idea that... Uh, Abraham was called on to make a sacrifice. He showed his obedience and devotion to God. God rewarded him by having that symbolical sacrifice. It has nothing to do with the substitutionary sacrifice that takes away the sins of the world. This is totally you different mean, concept. You mean the again. blood? You mean the, the Abraham sheared the sheep? Your God wasn't interested in the blood? What did he do? He, take, he, he took all the hairs no, off? No, did, no. did he kill it? Was the blood there? No. Both according to the Quran and according to the Bible, and he could give you a reference. God is not just interested in the blood. For example, in the but Quran it says, blood. for the Quran it says, it is not the flesh or blood of the animals that will reach him, but what reaches him is your piety, your obedience. And that's why when Muslims sacrifice in Eid al-Adha, in commemoration of that particular instance, it has absolutely nothing to do with the vicarious sacrifice. It is a commemoration of the obedience of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. It has nothing to do with the question of washing the sins as Paul suggested. What's the reference on that? The, uh, What's the reference? The other point... Uh, Dr. Mercy, please. No. Just a second. I'll have me, to I mean, I, my first comment was really, really just preliminary. And I, I thought that the book was interesting and just to bring it up. I didn't mean to get sidetracked. But uh, it seems to me that with the story of Abraham, uh, we do have a way of relating the whole Quranic uh, story to the biblical account. And for many Christians, I think this is important. Uh, it says in the Quran that Abraham and Ishmael constructed the, uh, the Kaaba, or you could say reconstructed. Anyway, now this is something new, you see. This is not what we learn in Sunday school, okay? And for many Christians, we say, well, where did that come from? So you can go back, as it were, to the stories in Genesis, and you do indeed find the promises there that were made to, uh, to Abraham and to Hajar, Hajar on behalf of Ishmael. And uh, the fact that um, uh, Abraham uh, loved Ishmael deeply and prayed that, old, that Ishmael might live before thee. And I mean, all these stories are there and the promises are made. And when Abraham died, Ishmael was there to bury him, Ishmael and Isaac. So 
perhaps the relationship kept uh, alive, you see. And then, of course, the Bible isn't interested in the descendants of Ishmael. It just carries on from Isaac and Jacob.